Hello and welcome back. Um, in the first part of this video I was talking about blocks and restrictions and how to prevent yourself from gambling when you get an urge. One thing I didn't talk about is the importance of this, certainly in the early stages of recovery. Um, I did mention willpower and how that is a fundamentally flawed way of stopping yourself from gambling. So when you are in the early stages of recovery you cannot rely on willpower alone and that is why blocks and restrictions are so so important and once they're set up you just continue them and continue them and continue them and one thing you'll, you'll notice certainly once you're beyond that initial um, first couple of weeks of recovery is the peace of mind and the comfort and the reassurance that having these blocks in place will actually give you you will get money coming in probably either through wages or through benefits or however you get paid or furlough as it might be at the moment and you will have peace of mind and you will have reassurance that you cannot spend that money on gambling. Now I know from past experience that when I used to get paid whilst it was good to get paid and not be skinned because invariably I would have done my money two weeks previous when I got paid there was always an internal sense of panic and you may have experienced this because you know that that money will at some point be gambled and your brain starts doing calculations about how much you can leave, how much you can gamble, and hoping and praying that once your gambling session is done and you've scratched your addiction itch, that there will be enough left to carry you through the rest of the month. That is how crazy this addiction is. You are hoping for a result so you can get back to somewhere approaching the position that you're at when you start. It's why when as gamblers we get deeply involved in a game, I remember playing fob tees in, in, uh, in bookmakers and getting heavily, heavily involved financially. And then you get that get out of jail. You get a £500 jackpot or whatever, and it gives you maybe not all your money back, but a fair chunk of your money back. And that often feels as elating, as amazing as a win, because you've bailed yourself out. How sad is that? But I digress already so early in this second part. In the first part, I talked about the different ways in which you can exclude yourself from gambling. You can block yourself from gambling, and I'll try and do them in the same order in this video. In this video, I want to talk about the ways in which we can circumnavigate these blocks, how we can get around the restrictions we put our place in place for ourselves, and why we really should mitigate this particular risk. I started talking about online casinos, and I did say that the most powerful method of self-exclusion from online casinos and online bookmakers is of course GamStop. There are other ways of doing it and I should have mentioned that you can actually self-exclude you know, individually from different casinos. This is how I actually started off. I went through all the casinos that I was a member of and I self-excluded for the longest period possible. I then went through one of the biggest casino affiliation sites, got all the details for all the casinos I could find, signed up to them all and immediately self-excluded from each of these casinos for the longest possible time. It's worth mentioning that this was sort of before GamStop became a big thing, but this was an incredibly effective way of limiting the uh, the exposure to, to risk. Um, it's also worth noting that when you start excluding yourself from online casinos, a lot of them turn out to be from the same casino group. So you exclude yourself from one. And quite often, if you do go and try and sign up for another one, it will tell you you're already excluded, which actually I think personally is, is one of the very few things we can thank thank, thanks not the word, but we can respect these casinos for is if you're excluded from one, you're excluded from them all. But certainly there are other ways in which you can restrict yourself from online gambling. But as always, there are ways around this. I made a video not that long ago about online casinos that aren't on GamStop, and it's no secret that there are online casinos that aren't on GamStop. If you go on Google now and type in online casinos and then maybe start it with an N, I guarantee the first few results that it predicts will be online casinos not on GamStop or online casinos not registered with GamStop. And yes, it's unfortunately very true that there are these predatory online casinos out there that will take your money even if you are quite clearly a problem gambler who has signed up to a service to restrict your ability to gamble. That is the nature, the insidious nature of this business, unfortunately. So... Just because you signed up for GamStop, just because you excluded yourself from all the legitimate casinos doesn't mean you can't gamble online. But of course, you shouldn't gamble online and you certainly shouldn't be gambling at these online casinos that aren't willing to sign up and register to a voluntary service to help the most vulnerable gamblers. Because if they have that few morals, then what are your chances of actually getting paid out? 
and it no longer becomes gambling, it becomes throwing your money away and, in my opinion, giving your money to illegitimate crooks, to people who simply don't care about their responsibilities as operators. But the benefit is you can mitigate this risk. I spoke before about handing your finances over to a loved one or to someone that you trust. If you don't want to do this, then do as I have currently got, um, the, the situation I've, I'm currently in, where my wife has access to my transactions. She can see or get notifications for when I use my cards, for when I withdraw cash. So if I was to deposit at one of these casinos, she would be able to see the expenditure and she would be able to ask me, quite legitimately, what it was for. If I'd handed over, as I did in the early days, all my finances to her, then I wouldn't be able to deposit. One thing I will say at this point is I don't know, because I went on to talk about using your bank to block gambling transactions. I don't know whether these unregistered, unlicensed, non gamstop casinos will be will flag up as gambling transactions. I hope they would, but obviously, like I say, they're dubious, so I wouldn't bank on it. But there is a way of mitigating that risk. I went to talk on um, on to talk about uh, bookmakers and how the blocks on your bank cards can stop you using them in bookmakers. But of course, you can take in cash, can't you? And even if you've self-excluded from your local bookmakers, you can drive out to another one. Again, there is the national multi-operator self-exclusion scheme. But maybe you haven't chosen to do that. Maybe you've chosen to do it the old school way and just block it from the ones you use, leaving that little chink of light, that little door open to allow you to maybe just travel out of your way and go to a bookies where you're not known. You certainly wouldn't be the first. When we are recovering from gambling, and this is something I was very guilty of, we have a tendency to leave ourselves little escape hatches, little doors, little chinks of light open, where we can sneak through and have a gamble if the urge becomes strong enough. And if you are doing this, and again, I did it frequently, so uh, no judgment from mine, certainly. But if you are doing this, then ask yourself if you're really ready to stop gambling. And if you are, then make sure those doors are firmly closed. Do the national exclusions. Don't just burn yourself from the, the ones you, you, you normally use. You know, don't just exclude yourself from the online casinos that you already signed up to. Self-exclude from all of them. Get GamStop. Because... As you know, in certainly in the early days of recovery, the urges are very, very strong, and we will go to greater and greater lengths to get that fix of gambling. And there are, like I say, always ways around it. All we can do is mitigate as much of that risk as possible. With self exclusion, one thing I'll say is this if you are self excluding from bookmakers, um, particularly bookmakers, uh, casinos and bungo halls are slightly different because they have a registration and a membership system, it's much easier to keep tabs on people, but bookmakers rely on the staff in the shops recognising you, they rely on the database of photos, and it is possible, and I'm no, this is, it won't come as any surprise to any of you, so I'm not giving you a hint, it is possible often to walk into a bookmaker that you're self-excluded from and gamble unchallenged. And there's two reasons for that. Firstly, like I say, it relies on a system of photos and it relies on the staff recognising you. It also relies on the poor minimum wage bookmaker staff wanting to challenge someone who is self-excluded for problem gambling. And whilst they should, and whilst it's almost certainly part of their job description and their responsibility as bookmaker staff, who's to say if they will? Who's to say if they're going to have the motivation to want to challenge someone, particularly someone who has a strong gambling urge and who might become aggressive, because sometimes people do, who's to say they are going to challenge you? The one thing, I'll be honest, that kept me out of the bookies after I self-excluded wasn't the fact that I'm, you know, I might not be able to gamble. It was the shame. It was the potential shame of being asked to leave for having a gambling problem and for having previously self-excluded. And whilst that might not have happened, as I just explained, the, 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 the thought that that might happen was enough to discourage me in the same way that when I spoke to my mates in the pub and the landlord of the pub and offered to buy everyone a beer if they saw me gambling, people might not have picked me up on it. People might have just gone, oh, you know, rolled their eyes and gone, oh, same old Phil. But that feeling, that feeling of shame, that feeling of failure, that feeling of showing that you can't control something about yourself was enough, you know, that the psychological side of it was enough to prevent me from gambling. If you want to cover all bases, and now is a particularly easy time to stop yourself from gambling, I've said before that 
there's no excuse during lockdown, and you might not be watching this during lockdown, so it might be academic, but during lockdown there is no excuse to gamble. If you are serious about your recovery, <coughs> there is no excuse to gamble. You can't wander off to the to bookmakers. You can't wander into a pub and play the fruit machine. You can't go into a casino where you're not known and start gambling. The only place you can gamble is online, and if you're gambling online, then you haven't closed that door. You've left yourself an opportunity open. And I was very guilty of doing that multiple, multiple times in failed recovery attempts. And the weird thing is, and this is something that, again, you may have found, I felt somehow like I was getting one over on people. I felt like I was getting one over on, you know, I don't know who God knows who. I don't know who I was trying to get one over on. But I was a recovering gambler. I was a gambling addict who had self-excluded from online casinos. And here I was, playing slots online. And I felt like it was something a bit naughty, like I was 15 again, drinking cans of cider around the back alley of the roller skating rink, or whatever. I felt that it was somehow forbidden. That somehow, like I say, I was, I was getting one over on someone. Who was I getting one over on? Well, it was me, wasn't it? The only person that I was doing harm to by circumnavigating these things I put in place for my own protection was me. And I think my blocks now are almost as watertight as they come. I can't think of a way that I could go and gamble, possibly driving to a distant pub and, and playing a fruit machine for a bit, but I can't really think of many ways I could gamble you know, without one of my blocks kicking in and stopping me. But if I was, if I was able to achieve that, as I did in previous gambling recovery attempts, then I wouldn't be getting one over. I wouldn't be being smart, you know, oh, look at me, I got around my blocks, well, well done. Who put those blocks in place? Who, For what reason did you put those blocks in place? You're doing it to protect you. And by getting around them and by, you know, somehow cheating the system, you are, at the risk of sounding so parental, it hurts. You're only cheating yourself. So get as many blocks in place. If you're serious, get as many blocks in place as possible. And alongside the physical blocks and the financial blocks, talk to people. Like I say, I spoke to my wife, I spoke to my family, I spoke to the pub, I spoke to the pub landlord, sorry, I spoke to the people in the pub, I spoke to my mates. I spoke eventually to everyone who would listen, and ultimately, I spoke to you guys, didn't I? And the more people that notice, and the more people that listen, they've got the more people looking out for you. And whether or not they'd stop you gambling, who knows? Don't test it. I never tested it because I didn't want the shame of being a failure in my recovery. Another block I now have. I mean, I'm coming on 2,000 subscribers now, which isn't huge. And as a percentage of the British population, it's absolutely tiny. But I appreciate the whole lot of you. But there is a chance that if I was in a gambling establishment, as I sometimes are, I am because I've got friends who gamble, but that's fine. If I was in a gambling establishment and I was gambling, then there's a chance someone might recognise me. And the shame and the stigma attached to that would be enough to prevent me from gambling. So set yourself up. Get as many physical blocks in place but create a recovery personality for yourself that you don't want to change. And eventually, after the hardest bit of the recovery is out of the way, you won't want to change. You won't want to try and circumvent your own blocks because you'll be happy and you'll see the benefits of recovery firsthand and there will no longer be the need to try and test your limits. The urges will come, so keep the limits in place, but you'll be happy with where you are and you won't feel so smug if you try and get around them. I hope that makes sense. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who subscribed to the channel. Please stay safe. Please stay sane. The end is in sight. And I'll, uh, I'll catch you all soon. 